This is my official Nordic Trek S22i review. And in this video, we're gonna go through the 10 separate categories of the Tail Happy score. And I'm gonna give the S22i a Tail Happy score. So before we get into the meat of the review, let me just give you a basic rundown of this bike. I paid about $2,000 for it. And you can check the link below this video to see current pricing. That pricing also included a one year family membership of iFit for free, which was a $468 value at the time. I know they do have sales on this bike sometimes, so check the link below to see if there's any sales or discounts if you're interested in buying it. One thing that kind of sets this bike apart from other bikes is the maximum user weight is 350 pounds, whereas most bikes really don't even get close to 350 pounds for max user weight. So the S22i is actually a really good option for heavier users. Another thing to point out about the S22i is this bike is actually very heavy. Uh, the inbox weight is listed at 203 pounds. Now this is not a Peloton comparison. I did a Nordic Trek versus Peloton video comparison. You can check that out in the card up here if you want later. But the Peloton Bike Plus is actually a very heavy bike and that one actually only weighs 135 pounds according to my spec sheet here. So this one is 203 pounds. It is, you know, absolutely massive. In terms of like an indoor cycling bike anyway. But you know, once you get it into place, it's not like oversized, it just weighs a lot because of the electronics. Which speaking of electronics, this bike has a 22 inch rotating touchscreen. And also that touchscreen has a little fan below it, which adds more weight. But really the big thing that adds the weight probably is that incline and decline feature. So it has the ability to incline 20% and decline 10% and all of the motors and uh, power required for that is probably where a lot of the weight of this bike comes from. Also, I should point out the Nordic Trek Studio Series uh, bikes right now at the time of this recording are basically the only bikes that have this incline and decline ability. There aren't any other bikes out there quite like this one. The magnetic resistance on this bike goes from zero to 24, whereas, you know, like the Peloton is zero to 100, but that is not an indicator of maximum resistance at all. We'll get into max resistance here in just a moment. And on the magnetic caliper, it's listed as SMR, it says on there, which means silent magnetic resistance. And this bike actually is very silent magnetic resistance. However, this bike is not silent. Don't be fooled by that. So if you're looking for a very silent bike, uh, this is not a silent bike because when you press on the incline and decline, for one, the motor makes a lot of noise inclining and declining. And also when you change the resistance, it beeps when you press on the buttons. And then also there is a little bit of noise from the motor. So, I mean, the motor for the magnetic resistance adjusting digitally, it makes noise moving from point A to point B, but once it's in place, it's very silent. Other things to note is this bike does not have a resistance knob. You control all of the resistance on the screen from the touch screen and or you allow the instructor to adjust it for you or you use the controls up on the hand grip positions. One thing that I find really surprising about this bike is the pedals that come on it. They are a very basic, uh, cheap, um, cage style pedal. So there is no clip in pedals that come on this bike. And I would think, you know, a bike that costs $2,000, you're kind of like getting into that, like really higher end bike tier territory where, you know, most people I would think who are ready to buy a $2,000 bike would be ready to clip in. So the pedals that come on this bike are not my favorite, but it does make it so you don't have to have any sort of special shoes to ride the Nordic Trek S22i. In general, I think the Nordic Trek S22i is a great bike for outdoor riding enthusiasts. You know, if you like road bike riding and you're trying to find a tool to help you get in better shape for your road bike rides, maybe it's winter time, or you want a bike in your home to help you get better prepared for your outdoor riding, the S22i is really good at that. And real quick, before we dive into this review, would you please give it a thumbs up because I really put a lot of time and effort into making these videos. And if you just give me a, a little thumbs up, that would really just help support this channel so much and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you if you do. The first category in the Tail Happy Score is drivetrain feel, which is simply, how does the bike feel to ride? As you probably already know, this is a magnetic resistance bike and the flywheel weighs 
32 pounds. The S22i has 24 levels of magnetic resistance. You can change either here or you can also use the touchscreen to slide your finger along here and change your resistance. Honestly, the drivetrain on the S22i feels really, really good to ride. And I was really thoroughly impressed with how good it feels to ride this bike. As I compared this bike to the Peloton Bike Plus and many other bikes, one of the things I noticed about it was it has a relatively narrow Q factor. And what the Q factor is, is basically how far apart your hips are when you ride the bike. Based on my research, the Nordic Trek S22i has a 150 millimeter Q factor, which is more narrow than most of the other bikes. As you can see there, the uh, IC4 and M3i are quite wide, whereas the Peloton is just 20 millimeters wider. Personally, I really like the narrow Q factor on the S22i, and it really just puts it more in line with like a road bike Q factor. And honestly, whatever they got going on in there between, you know, the flywheel mass, uh, the crank set, the crank arm lengths, uh, distances, and everything going on in there, I give this bike a 10 out of 10 for drivetrain feel because pedal strokes are uniform, and the S22i just really feels amazing to ride. The next category on the Tail Happy score is maximum resistance, which kind of takes also into account the minimum resistance and just kind of the range in general. And on the Nordic Trek S22i, the maximum resistance is incredibly strong, just as strong as like the Peloton Bike Plus, and it's very smooth as well when you get it up to max resistance because it is magnetic resistance. One thing I should point out about the resistance ranges on this bike is uh, they, they change in line with the incline and decline as well. So if you wanna reach true maximum resistance on the S22i, you have to have this bike on maximum resistance number as well as maximum incline. Now that's not really a big problem because the maximum resistance when you're on 0% grade is pretty darn strong. And honestly, most people I think would find this extremely challenging just at 0% incline. But if you increase it to 20% incline and also have it on maximum resistance, that is the point where you get the true max resistance of the S22i. So in this category for maximum resistance, I give the Nordic Trek S22i a perfect 10 out of 10. The next category on the tail happy score is metrics. Simply put, does the bike give you power cadence and resistance. And this bike gives you all of the important metrics. You get your power output right here in terms of watts. You also get your cadence in terms of RPM right here on the screen and you get your heart rate displayed as well. Over here on the right side of the screen, you also get your resistance in terms of one to 24 that you can easily adjust. And also you get your incline and decline on the other side, which you can also adjust right here. Additionally, it gives you your calories burned. However, uh, one thing is kind of lacking here. I wish it gave you is your uh, kilojoules output because that is kind of like a more standard uh, cycling measurement. You do get your distance in terms of miles and your time elapsed. Average cadence is displayed. Speed in terms of miles per hour and average speed and yeah, resistance. It also shows you your vertical gain and feet and vertical loss as well. Since we are talking about a $2,000 bike, I will talk about some of the things that I kind of wish were here on the S22i that aren't. For one, the heart rate zones, I wish that it gave you like a graphical uh, representation and you know, similar to like what the Peloton Bike Plus gives you. So yeah, I am kind of comparing it to the Peloton Bike Plus here, but it just kind of shows you your heart rate and it doesn't give you like a visual display of like what zone you're in while riding the bike and I wish it did have that. And generally, when I'm talking about metrics, I'm just talking about like does it give you the metrics like power, cadence, resistance, and that's good enough. But on this bike, um, I wish that it gave you like your cadence zones and your resistance zones like on the Peloton Bike Plus. And another thing that I really wish it gave you was um, basically like your training zones. I wish there was an FTP test on this bike that you could do and then, you know, see what zone you're riding in on the uh, Nordic Trek S22i. So really in terms of metrics displays and the usefulness of the metrics that are displayed on the screen, um, you know, the Nordic Trek S22i gives you the raw data, watts, cadence, heart rate, resistance, all that stuff. But the Peloton Bike Plus just does it a little bit better and more graphically 
um, you know, just a better interface for you to make better use of what that data is. And also on the Peloton Bike Plus with the FTP ranges it gives you on the screen, it shows you, you know, visually with the colors, you know, what zone you're in and a corresponding color. So it really gives you like a very good idea of like, how you're training and how you're gonna be able to hold up that performance and stuff. So yeah, the Nordic S22i gives you all of the good metrics and um, I'm gonna give this bike a nine out of 10 in the metrics category. All right, the next category is features. And this is kind of like where the Nordic Trek S22i kind of really shines. Um, one of the major features is obviously the incline and decline ability of this bike. So, you know, when I first saw that this bike had an incline and decline, I really didn't think that it would actually make much of a difference in terms of the ride, you know? It's like, you know, you think about it, it's like you're not actually going up a hill or down a hill, so how, if you, if you don't have gravity into the equation, how is that gonna really give you any true benefit? Well, it actually turns out I was wrong about my assumption of this because for one, like I mentioned before, when you have that incline go up, um, it also changes the resistance at the same time. So it really does kind of simulate like you're going up a hill in that sense, but really kind of more so than that, it changes the angle of like your muscles and stuff. It's kind of hard to explain a little bit, but it definitely just like changes the way your body sits on the bike. And you know, again, especially if it's pointed down at that negative 10% uh, decline, you definitely get like a lot more weight up on like your arms and it changes the way your muscles work again. So it really does make a difference and it really does kind of make it feel, you know, if you're following the outdoor rides, it makes it feel like you're actually going up and down hills and really changes the way your muscles work. Another desirable feature this bike has is the automatic adjusting resistance. So the instructors will automatically change your resistance for you and also it will automatically change your incline and decline according to the ride. One unique feature that this bike does have is a fan built into it. So that is kind of nice because when you're riding, a lot of the times what you have to do is add your own fan, right? Well, this bike has a fan built directly into it with several different levels of adjustment. So it's definitely something really nice to have when you're doing a workout on a bike. The S22i does have the rotating 22 inch touchscreen. So it will rotate around 180 degrees this way. And then also it rotates back around the other way, 180 degrees. And in addition to that, it will tilt way up and it tilts like way, way, way up. Um, and it will tilt down, not really quite so much. Basically it'll just kind of go like uh, just straight. But really the key takeaway here is there are off bike workouts. So, you know, you can rotate this screen and do off bike workouts as well. One thing that I really like about the Nordic Trek S22i is it has the ability to independently adjust the trainer volume from the music volume. So if you only want to listen to the trainer or you only want to listen to the music, you can change those independently. And also there was an update that now there is feed.fm music. So you get like popular normal music. So, you know, it used to be like the music wasn't so good, but now with the update here for feed.fm, there is actually good music on the Nordic Trek iFit rides. I'm not gonna bother playing the speakers for you because it's not gonna translate what they actually sound like, but they are here in the back of the, the monitor and they're okay, you know, they're not great, but they do, they get the job done. Uh, you know, they play the sound just fine. There is a 3.5 millimeter jack on the Nordic Trek S22i, so I just use my earbuds. And honestly, um, on the Peloton Bike Plus, when I ride the Peloton Bike Plus, I use my earbuds, even though the Peloton Bike Plus has an awesome speaker system. So they would just plug in right there. And yeah, like I was saying, it's just better having earbuds than listening to the speakers on the Nordic Trek S22i or even the Peloton Bike Plus. Honestly, I prefer the earbuds. I'd also like to point out there is an HDMI out here, so you can plug it into like a bigger TV if you want. And then there's also a USB port. One feature that kind of blows my mind that the Nordic Trek S22i doesn't have is actually a power switch. So literally, um, the only way to turn this thing off is to unplug it from the wall. Um, and if you don't unplug it, it'll just kind of like play um, these like scenic transitions, like kind of like, just like a screensaver, it just kind of rotates every now and then, which is kind of neat, but it's just kind of weird, like leaving the screen on like 
all the time, 24 seven to me. So really, I mean, I know a lot of people, what they do, they say they put like one of those uh, switches, they plug it into a switch on the wall. Uh, but really this power brick that comes on it with all of the electronics and stuff, this thing outputs 36 volts and 3.5 amps. So that's actually quite a lot of power to be sending uh, through like a switch. So just make sure your switch is rated to handle that sort of power. I really just can't believe they didn't put a power switch on this bike. Or I mean, at least like a way to turn off the screen when you're done using the bike. You know, maybe you have this thing in like a bedroom or something where you need it to be dark. The bike does have dual water bottle holders, which work just fine. And also there is this little tray up here to uh, set the weights if you're gonna do weight training on the bike. Just be careful not to bash it here on the fan and definitely don't hit it on the screen because you know, it is kind of like a little bit of a tight space here. But that being said, they are quite a bit easy just to grab since they are just like right here by your hands. For features, I give the Nordic Trek S22i a nine out of 10. The next category is adjustability. How adjustable is the bike? So this is a three-way adjustable bike. The handlebars do not go forwards and backwards, and that's really my only complaint about the adjustability on this bike. Other than that, you know, this bike does have micro adjustments. There are no holes you need to click into for raising and lowering the seat, so you get micro adjustments. Same goes for the handlebars. Uh, they do go up and down with no holes to click into and they move up and down quite a bit. So, you know, you can really get these handlebars into a comfortable riding position. I do wish they came up just a little bit higher, but honestly, this kind of goes back to the comfort category, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The seat also has the ability to move forwards and backwards with micro adjustments. So for adjustability, I give the Nordic Trek S22 a nine out of 10. Okay, so the next category in the Tail Happy score is comfort. How comfortable is the bike to ride? And really, this takes into consideration points of contact you have with the bike. So here we're talking about the handlebars, the seat that comes on the bike, the adjustment knobs and the riding position that you can get into on the bike and the pedals that come on the bike. So let's start down here with the pedals. These pedals are, you know, beginner friendly, I guess. Um, I don't really think that these are the pedals that should come on a $2,000 bike. But that being said, if you do buy a brand new expensive road bike from a bike store, it doesn't come with any pedals at all. So I kind of look at it that way. Whereas, you know, this is like, a quality bike and they give you just some really basic pedals to start with. So really, in my opinion, you know, if you want to take your riding experience to the next level, you should get some clip-in style pedals, which you can easily replace these. I'll put links down below this video for clip-in style pedals that I recommend and I personally use. I guess the good part about these pedals is you don't need any particular kind of shoes to use these. You can just kind of put your foot in here and uh, strap it down and uh, you know, you get a lot of the benefits of a clip-in style pedal without having to have a special shoe on top of a $2,000 bike. In terms of the hand grips, I actually really like them. They're very thick and the material, it's like a rubber coated material and they're really nice. I really like them. They kind of have like a little bit of a slope down. So you can see here, it's not exactly like what you get on a road bike where usually they're flat across on the front. These ones just kind of have a little bit of a slope down and then, you know, you kind of get this bullhorn position and then out here, position three, you can get out of the saddle and ride holding on out here. To keep this video 100% honest, I don't love the plastic feel out here on the very end, but you know, it's fine, it works. As far as the saddle goes, I wouldn't really take my opinion on this one too seriously or too close to heart because everybody's always gonna have their own saddle preference. For me, this saddle works. It's not my favorite. I wish it was a little bit more firm. Um, I like the narrowness of it. A lot of beginners would probably prefer a wider saddle. So, you know, if, if you don't find the saddle comfortable, you can definitely swap this out to any saddle you want or put one of those gel covers on or get some riding shorts. Riding shorts would definitely help uh, ease, you know, a little bit of that discomfort. But for me, personally, I find this seat acceptable. Not my favorite, but I just wish it was a little bit more firm. Regarding comfort on this bike, I think that one thing that uh, many people would probably want to take into consideration is saddle height in relation to max handlebar height. So I'm six foot five, I'm pretty tall, and I have the seat up about that high, which is pretty much level 
with the handlebars right now, and the bike is on 0% incline. So um, for me personally, I, I prefer this, the saddle about equal to the height of the handlebar. If you're shorter than six foot five, you can drop that saddle height down. Your saddle will be lower, but you can still have the handlebars high. So, the, you know, if you're if you're shorter than six foot five, this bike will probably be more comfortable for you. Now, really, what this bike is trying to do is mimic that road bike riding feel. So it does a really good job of this. And also, I should point out when you incline the bike. So let's bring it up to max incline. You can see the whole thing kind of pivots back and the handlebars come up higher. So if you want to get the handlebars higher, you can simply just tilt the thing up and tinker with the resistance to get, you know, the resistance where you want it in the riding position, how you want it. Here's what the bike looks like at negative 10 incline. So you can see it kind of moves the whole seat up higher up in relation to where the handlebars are and just kind of makes you feel like you're pointed down. So I think most people would find the Nordic Trek S22i to be actually a very comfortable bike to ride and I give it a nine out of 10 in terms of comfort. The next category is style, which is basically, what does the bike look like? Do you like the look of the bike? In terms of like the frame and the bones of the bike, I actually think it's a really good looking bike. I like the exposed flywheel. I think it looks really nice. I like that you can see the magnetic caliper right there. I think that it just has like a really clean looking appearance to it in general. I like the look of the crank arms here and the little flywheel cover, the casing right there. It does have a little bit of plastic here covering up like the drivetrain belt. Taking a look at the back of the tablet, it kind of just looks a little bit like a dated television. Uh, it's not the most beautiful thing, but it's not horrendous, right? In my opinion, the front of the tablet looks just fine, perfectly acceptable. The little weight tray up here by the handlebars is plastic and, you know, it's not beautiful, but it gets the job done. In terms of appearance, I think the Nordic Trek S22i is perfectly acceptable. It's not my favorite looking bike, but I do think this bike does look good and I give it a seven out of 10 on style. The next category on the Tal Happy score is convenience. And that is basically how convenient and easy is it for you just to get on this bike and just start riding it. And that takes into account joining an instructor led class on whatever platform comes with the bike. On the Nordic Track S22i, it comes with the big screen right up here on the front and there's not even clip in pedals on this bike. So really in terms of convenience to just get on this bike, it's super convenient. You don't need anything. You just literally hop on this bike, it's connected up to Wi-Fi, and you're good to go. So for convenience, I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. The next category is initial quality impressions. And this is basically just my initial quality impressions, not long-term quality. If you do have a long-term quality report on this bike, please leave it down in the comment section below to share with everybody else. I've had this bike for about two and a half months now, and I haven't had any problems with it personally. It's held up perfectly fine. It seems very robust. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this bike weighs like 200 pounds. And look at the, the rolling wheels here up on the front. I always just kind of like to look at these for initial quality impressions. These rolling wheels on the front of this bike are absolutely enormous compared to most of the other indoor bikes I have. I mean, the drivetrain feels good and smooth. It doesn't really give me any sort of vibe or feeling like it's gonna give out on me anytime soon. The touchscreen monitor seems to work just fine. You know, you can browse through classes and select from whatever you want. There's all kinds of different options for indoor rides, outdoor rides, on bike workouts, off bike workouts. And according to the company website, there is a 10 year frame warranty on this bike. And there's also a two years parts warranty on this bike, as well as one year of labor warranty. So Nordic Trek does seem to stand behind the quality of their product. My one and only concern about the quality of the Nordic Trek S22i would probably be the Wi-Fi, which personally I have not had problems with the Wi-Fi, but I have read and heard, you know, complaints about some people having trouble with the Wi-Fi working properly. Now, this might have to do with the bike itself or very well it could have to do with the Wi-Fi in the home of the customer of the S22i, I'm not sure. So based on my experience with this bike for about two and a half months now, I give the Nordic Trek S22i a nine out of 10 for initial quality. The last category is value. What do you get for the money you pay? So, you know, $2,000. One good thing about that is you get that one year of the family membership iFit for free 
with the bike. So unlike, you know, Peloton, you definitely don't get any free classes or uh, free subscription with the Peloton. You know, Nordic Track, they're nice enough to at least give you a full year of iFit for free. And you know, it's, it's a $2,000 bike, so it's not cheap, but you do get that incline and decline feature. You get the 22 inch rotating touchscreen. You get the fan that's built right into the monitor area right here for you. So I have to say, I do think you do get a lot for your money with the Nordic Trek S22i. And I give this bike an eight out of 10 for value. So to tell you the truth, when I bought the Nordic Trek S22i, I thought I was gonna hate it. But honestly, I really do like the Nordic Trek S22i. It has a great drivetrain feel. Max resistance is great. This bike really is great for simulating that uh, outdoor real feel, road bike feel um, experience. It gets you into that road bike riding um, geometry and position. So adding up all of the separate categories of the Tail Happy Score, the Nordic Trek S22i actually earns a 90 out of 100 on the Tail Happy Score. So the Nordic Trek S22i actually performs very well overall, and I think it's a really good bike. Another thing that the Nordic Trek S22i is particularly good for is heavier users with that max user weight of 350 pounds. So if this video has convinced you to buy the Nordic Trek S22i, and that's what you intend on doing, you can buy it through the link below this video and if you do buy it through that link that would help support this channel and I would also greatly appreciate it. But as always I'm not trying to convince you to buy the Nordic Trek S22i. I'm just saying if you're gonna buy it anyway and you want to help support the channel you can buy it through the link below and I would greatly appreciate your support. If you found any value in this video please give me a thumbs up and any questions or comments leave down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Be sure to click on that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video.